Hello! You have joined The Script Mistress for Scene 23, my interview with February's winner, Tannic Blair. I am your host, Amber Bosworth, and I am so excited to bring you this episode. I know I'm always so excited for every episode. I really am. I, I had a great time talking uh, with Tannic. He was an amazing writer. Uh, it, this was his first time joining Ink to Screen. This was his first submission. He heard it from a friend, and he joined, and he won. He was one of 30 writers that were tasked with writing a new script based on an image prompt. Now, it was February, being the month of love, I wanted to put the focus on the writer. So I gave a prompt of a woman behind a camera lens, a regular camera lens. The theme was self-love. Now the theme is always um, optional. Mostly it's based on the prompt. Prompt And Tannic wrote Shudder. And the log line was an aspiring photography influencer ventures into the woods to get the perfect shot only to discover that she's not alone. So kind of had some suspense there. This interview was so amazing. I love talking with Tannic. Now, I'm back. Uh, we had we took a little bit of a break. I wanted to let everybody know that I've been working on my website, moving things around, making it more user friendly, making it easier for my writers um, to submit and do stuff that way. It's going to look better and work much smoother for everybody. This also means that I was forced to make my YouTube channel, The Script Mistress YouTube channel. So this is going to be uploaded here. If you're seeing it here on my YouTube channel, I will link the channel uh, for YouTube in the notes. And you can also get this at thescriptmistress.com forward slash scene 2323. And I'll have all the notes in there just like usual. Uh, none of that is going to change. I'll still be in the podcast. I'll still be available there. You just get a chance to see me in different areas or just listen to me if you don't want to look at me. <laughs> Now, the April Ink to Screen Screenwriting Challenge is now open for registration. This will run from April 19th 20, to the 23rd, five days to write a new five-page script. Every entry, every if you, if you sign up and you submit a completed script, you get detailed feedback right on your script and a coverage. Even if you don't finish within the five days and you submit a script to me later, I will still provide feedback for you. That's all included in your $15 entry fee. So you could totally be the next winning interview on here. <laughs> all right. So here is the interview. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Awesome. Yep. Okay. Hello. All right. So here I am with, is it Tannic? Mm -hmm. Tannic Blair, who is our February winner. Hi, Tannic. <laughs> Hi, thank you for having me. Yes, we figured out our audio issues. Yeah. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, very yeah. good. Well, <laughs> um, so great to have you. So where are you located? Where are you? Uh, I'm here in uh, Richmond, Virginia. Mm. Um, you'll notice a bit of an accent. I'm actually originally from New Zealand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I've been in Richmond, Virginia for a couple of years now. Um, and I actually found out about the, uh, the competition from a coworker of mine who has um, been entering for a while now, I think. Um, uh, but he, you know, he lives out here in, Ch in Chesterfield County in Virginia. So yeah, he was like, hey, um, uh, I'm doing the script writing competition. We were talking about movies somehow. And he was mm -hmm. like, you should give it a shot. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and then. And look, you won. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I was so surprised. My, uh, yeah, my first entry, too. Was, um, yes. Yeah, yep. very exciting. I was, I was very happy. Like, so I put everybody's, I put it all in kind of like a file. So I don't know whose it is. So I'm reading them and I'm like, oh, this is awesome. And I'm like, and I know, I mean, I love my regular writers, but it's nice when we, we have somebody new who's just signed up and, and write and, you know, and when, so I was very, that was very exciting. So nice. congratulations. Yeah. All right. So, so you wrote Shutter. Mm -hmm. And I have the log line. I like to read that out. The log line is an aspiring photographer influencer ventures into the woods to get the perfect shot only to discover that she's not alone. Very good. I love that. Log <laughs> Great log line too. Like Thank you have you. all of those things in there. So tell us a little bit more about the script. Like, yeah. Sure. Um, yeah. So I guess I'll, I'll start with uh, when I first saw the prompt, because I uh, was 
banging my head against the wall for a long time uh, because I I had seen some of the previous prompts and uh, a lot of them uh, sometimes there'll just be uh, landscapes and things where there'll, there'll be a setting. And I thought I would be very comfortable with that. But once uh, it was a, a prompt with a character, a, you know, n- not as, you know, still a blank slate of a character, but um, established enough that it's uh, a female, young, a young female photographer, all of that was set for me. Uh, it, it made the <laughs> it made everything so much harder mm-hmm. uh, in a good way though because I think uh, it forced me to get creative because um, I, I knew there were a couple of early ideas I had where uh, she was just going to end up being a background character or a side character or something as my excuse to get the prompt out of the way <laughs> um, but I sat on the prompt for uh, I think one at least the first 24 hours I did I hadn't written anything down and I was just thinking about the prompt in different ways that to incorporate the camera and the sunset or or sun um, sunrise mm-hmm. depending on your interpretation mm-hmm. uh, the lights in the background and uh, and the the water the waterfront um, so trying to come up with ways to piece all those elements together and figure out what the uh the story behind that was and then once i i had an idea of um of uh using the camera as uh as a horror idea an idea of seeing something um but not quite the full picture uh then the rest of the story sort of formed around that um i i ended up i got the idea for uh to for it to be sasquatch just because i was looking for <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> Just because I was looking uh, for places that fit the uh, um, the prompt, like I could, I was trying to find uh, uh, cities and towns close to water, and somehow Portland came up because of the mm. river that runs mm-hmm. through it. Um, and and yeah, and then Portland, what kind of folk mo- like folklore monster uh, for um, the Northwest, and came up with Sasquatch, and then everything wrote itself from there. (laughs) That's great. I love, I think a lot, uh, a couple other writers that made it into the top five too, did a lot of research um, moving things around or where they were put. So it was really great. I think this really um, upped the challenge. Yeah. Um, Very good. Well, when I was um, researching, I, you know, I, I didn't know any much of anything about Sasquatch or any of that. So that was so much fun finding different little pieces of lore to this mm-hmm. uh cryptozo cryptozoid or whatever you call them uh animals that exist or don't exist uh and trying to include little references here or there one of the like more interesting ones was that people had supposedly seen deer carcasses hanging from trees mm. and so that's how that found its way into the the script was because that had apparently been part of one of the reported sightings of Sasquatch <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's amazing. I, I I love that. And to be able, now you have that in your toolbox. You have that in your writing toolbox if you ever need it. That's amazing. All right. So describe a little bit about your screenwriting journey, if if you will, like um what yeah. got you started. Uh sure. Um I did uh make I made a lot of films when I was in um high school and things like that. I had a good group, group of friends who were all big uh, movie buffs and so we we made plenty and plenty of films during that time and then uh, I ended up getting a scholarship um, to the U.S. Uh, it was a an athletic scholarship actually <laughs> uh, I did cross country um, mm. and uh, and then when I when I came to the U.S. I studied English um, because they didn't have a film program mm. uh, or they had it as a minor so I took it as a minor but I, I majored in English and and sort of learned uh, fundamentals of storytelling I, I was still sort of tangentially you know um, learning about filmmaking in, in that sense and in, in the sense that it's storytelling mm-hmm. uh, and then uh, I've re- once I graduated from college I didn't really do any any more creative writing of that kind for um but yeah a couple of years uh I guess I graduated in 2015 so yeah at least 
yes, five or six years until until COVID happened. And then I wrote a couple of screenplays with mm -hmm. uh, the spare time that I got from that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a few people who probably were in the same boat there. Yes. Uh, and then uh, and then I got a, a new job and moved to Richmond, um, Virginia with my partner. And uh, and it was during uh, that time that I, I ran into this friend and he said, hey, is I, I'm writing scripts and uh, and I said that I'd done some in the past and yeah and then here we are <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome yeah. no that's good um any any films or anything you're working on no, no. <laughs> no. maybe like this has definitely boosted my confidence uh a it bit so <laughs> yeah so maybe I will I'll go back to to some of the uh, ideas I had um uh during COVID and things but uh, yeah. yeah, I really hadn't been working on anything until uh, this. I, I sort of on a whim joined this competition. You know, I thought it'd be fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it didn't seem so intimidating, the five pages thing, even though that ended up <laughs> being a challenge in itself. And we can probably talk about that later. But right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. uh, yeah, yeah, I I had nothing. I still have nothing going on right now. But, you know, ideas are in the works, I guess. No, that's great. That's great. Um, what helped your writing as you were just beginning? What was something that really helped you? Um, for this specific script or just writing in general? Just writing in general. Oh, um, ah, that's a good question. Um, I guess I, so I haven't actually had, um, a whole bunch of formal screenplay writing, uh, like training. I, uh, I don't own any screenplay writing books or, or anything, um, which I think it's probably surprising. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I I got a lot of the format. Like my biggest concern when I was writing, one of the biggest concerns was was formatting because I, mm -hmm. I wasn't super confident on that. And I guess like Google just held my hand the whole way through that. And there, mm -hmm. you had the very helpful uh, Q and A session uh, on the weekend just before it was uh, due, so I could ask yes. you know a couple of things, formatting questions I had there. Uh, so that's one of the the downsides of that. But where I think I got most of my the most important learning I got was um, just from uh, watching lots of films and listening to uh, my favorite filmmakers talk about mm. you know their experience with writing and um, uh, you know I, I I'm always drawn to the uh, the the screenwriters who uh, are different to the to the uh, that have certain styles that stand out um like charlie kaufman and uh quentin tarantino these guys who sort of know the rules of screenplay writing but intentionally break them yes um and and even though i i wouldn't be as as bold as them to to break those rules in the same way that they do you know when they write a screenplay it's it's almost like a novel in a way mm -hmm. or they'll they'll take take certain artistic liberties and you know, if, if I did that in the competition, I'm sure there would be formatting errors <laughs> based on those rules. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I think like the general energy of that was something that, that mm -hmm. I try to capture as, as often as possible. Um, and, and I certainly tried to capture it with, with the screenplay and, and trying to keep it interesting and different. And uh, when, when thinking about audience, in this case, thinking about uh, you as a judge, uh, when I was thinking about the prompt, I was like, trying to think of a creative way to use it that mm -hmm. wouldn't have been used by someone else necessarily. Yes. That was, that was what I was most worried about was if, you know, if I'm, and, and I sort of leaned into one cliche and that she's trying to find the perfect photo. Mm -hmm. And I was a little worried about that, that there might be like a few others doing that. But I thought the, the horror aspect of like looking through the viewfinder of a camera, I thought yeah. that was unique at least. So. Yeah, I loved how, um like okay spoilers right um I loved how you <laughs> use the um <clears throat> like the the flash because she lost her her um flashlight so you, she used the flashes and that is just that visually and I think I think that really shows your strength in filmmaking is that you see it very visually which is really awesome so I could visually see like what you were trying to do which is why it was it was so great I'm like I think I even in my in my comments I'm like that like freaked me out I'm like oh that would I as a as a movie goer that would freak me out because I've I've never made a movie but I've done a lot of um like reading of the scripts and and kind of almost getting there I think I, I've done one movie but I, that's great to kind of see it through that through that 
perspective. That was awesome. Well, thank you. Yeah, no, that's exactly, I think you've, you've hit it on the hit a bit is that the nail on the hit a bit is, um, yeah, I think the experience of making lots of films in high mm -hmm. school. Um, yeah, I was definitely picturing the, the film in terms of set pieces and like, what's the, you know, what, what is the, the drawer of this specific action that, that is interesting. And, and so, yeah, that's where things like the flash came from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think to call on that too, is a lot of people who, who write novels, who are prose writers who try to do, or try to attempt to do screenwriting, that's where they kind of have the disconnect is because they don't really see everything through the lens, kind of like, like you do or other people do. So, mm. and that's why it's good to kind of see it through Quentin Tarantino's eyes where he has that kind of, as a filmmaker, that's a whole nother um, aspect of it too, which is great, great. To Definitely. See. Yeah. Mm. Um, I, I will say one of the, the things that, that a novelist becoming a screenwriter mm -hmm. will, will have in spades over me is I think one of my biggest weaknesses is dialogue. Uh, and and it, it paid to, it played into my strengths of this script because I knew yeah. that with five pages, <laughs> I, I wanted to make it as mm. description heavy as possible. So I could cram in as much stuff happening as possible in the five pages. <laughs> and that naturally meant that dialogue was getting cut. Oh. Left and right, which, which worked better for me. Cause I, I think, mm -hmm. uh, Dialogue something that that um, uh, a more naturally gifted sort of um, writer mm -hmm. will have so much stronger than than I do. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. But the thing is, is that you know your strengths, and that's where you played to, and and that's what you put in your writing. Some people try to um, or kind of use this as a chance to kind of push forward, but no, but not as a critique or anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, yeah, because because I do a lot of theater, and I I do, I do a lot of that. So dialogue, it's all heavy dialogue. So I'm really good at at dialogue where my visual stuff is sometimes kind of lacking there. Like I see it in my head, but I'm unable to really get it down on the paper. So that's, mm. yeah. So it's well, about playing to your strengths. Very yeah. good. Yeah. It's I, when I, when I write dialogue, I often I'll, I'll do the stream of consciousness, mm -hmm. type out whatever comes to my mind. And then I will go through and like cut as much as I possibly can <laughs> to make it economic. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, it bothers me if I, if I stumble into a cliche or, mm -hmm. um, you know, or it just feels too fluffy and there's not like, like every single line of dialogue has to serve a purpose yes. at, when, when I write my, my scripts. So yes. um, it's either setting something up as an element, like uh, the fact that she's confident her phone has a flashlight mm -hmm. on it mm -hmm. or, you know, things of that nature, or it's, uh, it's not so subtly expressing uh, an element of, of the character, like a, a certain personality trait or something. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> And that's another thing I really like that you did is like at the beginning, we talked about the flashlight and you brought it in later where a lot, where I see a little bit, um, a lot on beginning writers is that they have these elements, but they just bring them in and there's nothing you want to kind of create that connection for people. So they, they can connect to it. The audience can connect to it right away. Like, Oh, she mentioned that before. Like it creates, um, like sentimentality, um, and especially in five pages, like there shouldn't be something that just pops up for no reason. Like, yeah. It, yeah. So, and <laughs> Unless I think it's I, Sasquatch that yeah, right. pops up like two and a half <laughs> pages in yes. out of nowhere. <laughs> and that, and I'm sure if you wanted to like develop this more later, it could be something where there's a news radio or, or, you know, there's mm -hmm. something going on where, um, it kind of brings in that element because yeah, reading it, uh, that was maybe a note, like right away, like I didn't, it didn't, it has a horror, but it was great. Like, okay, now we're getting a little creepy. Okay. Okay. It's getting creepier. It's getting creepier. <laughs> yeah. So, so it, it really worked very good. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and so tell me about your like screenwriting mindset, mindset or any techniques that you use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, uh, in this uh, competition in particular, um, as I already said, I spent a long time just thinking um, cause I wanted to make sure I, I had an idea that I really liked before I, I started doing writing anything. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I've, I've written stuff in the past where, um, uh, you'll have an idea and you'll start writing it and, uh, you don't know where it's going. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you sort of write yourself into a corner or it starts going in, in directions that, uh, feel a little unwieldy and you can't quite yeah. pull it all back in together. So, 
knowing that I had to do five pages, I knew I didn't want too much dialogue. I knew, uh, you know, all those things were, were, were feeding into my ideas for the prompt. And then once I had the idea, and I was like, great, I'll make a horror. Not many people will make a horror based on this prompt, like that'll mm -hmm. make it stand out. And then I, I went about blocking what each page or what each half page, uh, like how, how long a scene would need to be for in each half page, so to speak, just to, to make sure that I could fit uh, the three acts that I sort of had, had built into the five pages. Mm -hmm. um, and so the first act I knew would be uh, the conversation um, at the apartment to establish, you know, her character and uh and her goals and and that sort of thing and then uh we would have an an early climax of her achieving her goal before we sort of pull the rug out just at like pretty much the exact halfway point mm -hmm. and then i knew i could fit in two or three um action set pieces in two and a half pages and and close on on something um you know satisfying um to the character to her yeah. development which you know was more or less completed at that moment but then she has another revelation that mm -hmm. you know without spoiling it um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then just an ironic twist and fit all that at the end so uh, yeah so I, I planned all that out and then um, I started writing it uh, and had the first it took me about an hour to do each page I would say so it took me like five hours to write five pages and even then it was like uh, about six pages to begin with and then oh, yeah. we we cut we started cutting mm -hmm. um yeah and then ideas came along as I was writing you know you still you still allow for uh for little bits of inspiration like the radio dj that that wasn't an element at all in my original idea that came to me on on the fly sort of while I was writing it and I really liked it so I introduced it earlier yes and, I loved uh, it yeah yeah mm -hmm. so that was, that was my my process basically for this good good it's a good good uh, process um <laughs> Thanks. So when you when you when you read another writer's script, what impresses you, and what are some things that you aren't uh, that you don't like or um, wish that they would do different? I guess is a better way. Hmm. Um, yeah, I think we've gone over both of them a little bit already. The thing that I love uh, is definitely someone who's good with dialogue because I admire it so much <laughs> and and I envy it in a way. Uh, um, I really loved um, the script from January. I read um, the winning script from January, the mm -hmm. uh, the news, the news in the snow, <laughs> the weather yes. reporter. That was yes. uh, that was a great, great dialogue and and quirky and and unexpectedly yeah. funny. It was uh, yeah. <laughs> right. um, so I love reading that kind of thing. And then uh, uh, things that that bother me are, are cliches and mm. um, you know and that uh, and that the cliche trap is often in dialogue as well, <laughs> honestly, like, uh, because when you're in a writing mode and you're picturing a character's voice, it's, it's so easy to, to plug in the, the phrases and things you're so used to hearing in movies is, yeah. is like the natural way of, of doing things. And you, you come up with a scenario and you know exactly how, uh, a character in, in most movies that you've seen would would react to that or like have a funny quip or something. Mm -hmm. um, and so there was only really one dialogue moment that I feel uh, was like the cl cliche like quip in my script and that's at the very end of the say cheese yeah. uh, line. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I allowed myself that one line just because it felt like such a an earned button at the end of the of all of the the, the hardship, so I, I kept it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, usually those those are things that bother me, especially if it's you know if it's used repeatedly and and too mm. often, and there's just too many cliches. Oh uh, yeah. And nothing mm. feels creative or new, mm. uh, or different, or you know. So I I think that's that's the biggest con versus the yeah. biggest pro. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I absolutely agree with those. Uh, like repetition too of things. I think um, I try to tell people the power of three. Like, if anything is repeated more than three times, then you need to get rid of it. 
Like, (laughs) then it's, then we're over it. Even if it's funny or scary, any element that's repeat, that's when people lose interest. Like they're Mm -hmm. over it the third time. No. So I, even in, in my directing, when I direct, like you, you did the third time. That's all you get. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You don't get to do it ever again in this show. (laughs) especially if it's five pages well yes yes five pages (laughs) i i don't think i've had anybody do that but yeah when when i read longer ones or anything like that i try to look for those and Mm -hmm. you know the consistency Mm -hmm. too Mm -hmm. nice uh, do you have any tips that you would like to give out? I mean, our the podcast is mostly for newer writers too and um so any tips you like to give out? um i think just uh yeah, thinking about audience maybe, and and because it's a screenwriting competition, think about the fact that uh, the the judge is going to read lots of um, scripts from the same prompt. So uh, if you if you have, don't necessarily always go for your first idea because there's a good chance that someone might have had the same idea or yeah. something similar. <laughs> um, so th- I think that was the I started myself off on the right foot um and, and and that carried me through I think was just waiting until I had an idea that I really really liked and felt confident in and and then start writing instead of having an idea that you're like oh this this could be good like I feel like I could make something special out of this but you're you're not confident you don't have the full picture yet I, I think it, it pays off to wait and and tinker with it experiment with other ideas in your head until uh, you really like something. That's that's my biggest advice, I think. Yes. And I mean, competitions like this, you get five days, but you still have time to kind of like write a couple ideas down and like, like sleep on it, like really think about it and come back freshly with it. Yeah, uh, that's great. Great advice there. And how about, I, I know you said you're not really working on anything. Where can, can we find your films anywhere? Do you have your <laughs> films anywhere? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can there i mean <laughs> they're very amateurish uh you know being made by high schoolers um <laughs> I, if i'm gonna plug anything i'll i'll tell you what i'll plug my uh my twitter um, twitter okay uh my work twitter and uh I, i'm actually a journalist uh wow okay is what i do is my profession so i uh even though i hadn't been doing much screenplay writing i've been doing lots of writing that's good. Uh, yeah. All the way through. So yeah. Uh, yeah. You can find me at just at Tannic Blair on Twitter. All right. And I'll put that, I'll put that in the show notes for everybody to kind of look at too. Cool. Well, that's great. Thank you so much for this interview, Tannic. See, I told you uh, painless, relatively painless, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. All right. That was a great interview. Um, I really love interviewing writers. Like, I wish I could get a winner every week and interview somebody different every week. Uh, every week. Uh, and again, that was Tanik's first time on the Ink to Screen Challenge. And I know I gave a little bit of a spoilers, but we're going to have all of the winners. Um, I'll have that webpage where you can look, thescriptmasters.com forward slash ink winners, I-N-K winners. And you'll have his, his winning and plus the top five and all the previous months that we've had since we restarted this last year. So please go register for April. It is not too late. Obviously, we're still in March. (laughs) So you have plenty of time to register for April and get ready to take this challenge and possibly win some money. Now, writing action. Not much in this one here. It was really nice hearing from Tanik. He gave some great tips. But with a new website and a new challenge coming soon, I would love you guys to go and re-download the free logline cheat sheet and fix up some of the those log lines to help when you want to pitch your amazing scripts. I think it's really important. Uh, log lines are your simple, are is your two sentence elevator pitch and really locking those down because even in the March, not the March, the February um, writing, uh, there were a lot of log lines that read more like taglines. And if you want to learn more about that, go back to one of my previous podcast way back in the beginning before we had a two in front of it and uh, listen to that to get some help with your log lines. Now, feel free to share your insights on the Facebook page. Maybe some of your log lines, maybe there's something new you're um, thinking about. Uh, Facebook Uh, on Facebook, Ink to Screen. Uh, You can like us there and follow us. You never know if your insights will inspire someone else or your log lines. I was like, somebody's take it, but like, oh, that's a great, that's an interesting idea. Now, thank you so much for listening and or watching. You're watching on YouTube. Like this, like it, subscribe. I'll do this 
every week. I truly value any feedback. If you have an idea for a podcast that might help, comment, suggestion, or please feel free to email me at amber at the scriptmistress.com. Like and follow this wherever you're listening. Talk soon. Until then, happy writing.